Probably the best goal, three of It is showtime at Williams Grove Speedway. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here at Eldora Speedway, it's showtime! Yes, you got them for a rip. Often imitated, never duplicated, the greatest show on dirt, the world of outlaws. It's time to sit back, relax, and enjoy, because ladies and gentlemen, it's Showtime! Set to do battle for 30 laps. The green flag is waving. Presented by Sage Fruit. Talking sprint car racing, our favorite time of the week. We are so glad that you have joined us. Aaron Evernham and Steve Post here in our Concord studios. And uh, Aaron, how are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I am fantastic. Doing really, really well. Got done with a little Martinsville action. Mm -hmm. Little Hendrick Motorsports uh, 1, 2, 3 up there. Big celebration. Yeah, oh, big celebration. (laughs) They brought them all out on the front stretch and everything. 1,500 people. That's so cool. I love that Mr. Hendrick does stuff like that. Yeah, um, really cool. Um, It was funny, the post-race here. Um, you know, we're running around. I got William Byron's interview done, and he's just a real good kid interview and that yeah. sort of thing. And our producer was mm-hmm. like, uh, Jeff Gordon's coming down Pit Road. And I'm like, well, I'll just stay there. Jeff's on the phone. Well, you know he's on the phone with Mr. Hendrick because Mr. <laughs> Hendrick's not there. And I'm like, I'm not going to interrupt Jeff with Mr. Hendrick, you know. So um, we get down there, and we're dancing around. Kim is interviewing somebody over in two through five land or whatever it is. And Jeff hands the phone to somebody else. And... Uh, I said, I can get Jeff. I can get Jeff. And uh, literally, as they throw to me with Jeff, he picks the phone back up and starts talking to Mr. Henry. And Jeff, to his credit, he is such a class individual. He literally says, hold on, and literally does an interview. And I'm like, well, this will be a short interview. No, Jeff oh. was just telling about this and that and Hendrick Motorsports and everything. Yeah. And I'm just like, man, that's just so gracious. Just you, you, you have the boss man on the phone. With this celebration, and I'm a little radio guy. Yeah, you can. You have permission at that point to be respectful, but to go short. He chooses to go long. Yeah, and just oh, and it means so much for this and so much for that. And and what it means is, I'm yeah, I'm a little radio guy, but it means the respect for the listeners of MRM. That was the thing yeah. that I always go to. Yeah, I'm a little radio guy, but all of our listeners on all the stations, 300, 400 stations, whatever it is across the country. They got to hear a really, really good interview, yeah. and it was fun. It was a fun time. That's neat. You know, we know, obviously know Jeff very well, but one thing I, I think is neat to watch in the last few years is, like, his passion for Hendrick Motorsports. I mean, obviously, yeah. he was a driver there for his entire cup oh, career, yeah. but he is, like, so passionate. I think it's neat to see when they win. Like, just after they won on Sunday, the camera, TV camera went right to him, and Ray's like, oh, he's crying. He's definitely crying. He's crying. <laughs> He's like, he's got the sunglasses on because he's crying. But yeah. like, it, it, to me, that's really neat that he could go from a driver role to now a leadership role at Hendrick Motorsports. And it's almost like this same amount of passion. Well, and I think it's the other, I think one other thing that's good about it, I was talking to, uh, I forget who it was, I was talking this weekend. Th- these NASCAR Cup Series team owners are not young. Yeah. I mean, and what's the game plan going forward? And like Hendrick Motorsports with Jeff there is locked in. Yeah. Because you've got really good, strong leadership yeah. that can do things. And you just wonder some of these other teams with the, with the, with the leadership is like, yeah. what happens? And I just think that that's good for, for everybody that races over there. Yeah. So it was good. Good stuff. And uh, fun, fun stuff, that's for sure. And, and uh, we always talk about, a lot of times we've talked to our drivers about kids. Oh, my God, his two kids. They are not kids anymore. No, they are so tall. They're so and tall. they're such good kids. Yes. Yeah. They're oh my gosh, so it was cool. So good to good to uh, do that. And and there we go. Talking a little Jeff Gordon. Uh, he's a sprint car guy. Settle he down, is. folks. He does Hope love get, him some dingus yes, too. Oh yes, he does love some dingus. <laughs> and uh, yes, he loves him some dingus, and he loves some sprint cars. That's for sure. So um, good stuff. Uh, good stuff. We have got. Look at this. Whole Lots page of notes of results. A whole page of results. How about that? So let's get into it. Our hot topics here as we kick things off. World of Outlaw, NOS Energy Drink Sprint Cars. Friday night, US 36 Raceway. Winner, David Gravel. Boy, what a rough one uh, from Sheldon. Took the uh, took yeah. lead when Sheldon got into the left car. Aaron, we, we've referenced this before, but this just boggles my <laughs> mind. 90th win for Gravel. The 10th driver to hit the 90 win mark. 47th in the track. Todd Quaring, 96 wow. victories for Todd Quaring in big game motorsports with the World of Outlaw. Wow. Yeah, I, mean, I know. Five that... teams have triple digit wins. That's crazy. Like, he's right there. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty amazing. Well, and I, sometimes I feel like, man, Gravel, that's 
seems a little maybe maybe underrated. I mean, he's what thirty years old. I mean, he's not old. I remember, yeah, and I, and, was, I mean, I, you think about some of the other guys that have reached that milestone, like Saldana. I mean, it, they were in their forties, right? Well, the thing of it is, is is how many did they get after they reached that milestone? Yeah, gravel. Is he is he halfway through his career? Yeah. I mean, who knows? I you know, I don't think he's more than halfway through his career if he chooses to. Yeah. I mean, it's a I mean, it's a rough lifestyle. We all understand this, but you know, you look at David and you think, is he forty percent through his career? Is he halfway through yeah. his career? Well, if he's halfway through his career, that's ninety wins. That's a hundred and eighty yeah. win. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's unreal. It really is. Um David Gravel, Donnie Schatz, Buddy Coford. Then Saturday, Aaron, it was over to over uh, Arrowhead Speed with the Jason Johnson Classic. Yep, and then Sheldon, after his misfortune Friday night, was able to get to victory lane. That was a neat win to see. You know, I think especially for the drivers to win the Jason Johnson Classic, there's that sentimental value. $20,000 is obviously a nice little uh, yeah. award as well, but that was neat to see Sheldon get to victory lane. Really cool. We're going to talk to Sheldon here on the program a little bit later on, but a thriller there at Arrowhead, and Arrowhead's that new track that was opened up last year, and uh, place looks sporty. Looked like they had a few people there as well. So yeah. great, great stuff. Sheldon, David Gravel, Geo Selzy. Um, an absolutely wild one out at Stockton. They've Detroit. had a lot of wild ones. Um, Jer- uh, Justin Fiedler calls it sprint cars after dark. And he's <laughs> just like, it's That's just, actually, yeah, yeah, it's like between the sprint cars and TK and just everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, it was the Asparagus Cup. Cole Macedo led flag to flag. He's two for two on the mm-hmm. NARC season. It was Cole Macedo, Justin Sanders, Tanner Carrick. Um, there was more drama in this thing. Oh, my gosh. And that's the newly reconfigured um, Stockton dirt track. It's um, a little tighter, a little smaller. Definitely tighter, yeah. Um, but, I mean, there was more drama in this thing. I mean, <laughs> TK, TK fighting with drivers, fighting with officials. Uh, you know, I mean, just uh, crazy. They got to the curfew, and uh, Cole Macedo picked up yeah, the Yeah, California is <clears throat> bringing the drama this year for sure. Rent cars after dark. I like that. I like <laughs> I that. I do, Just, too, Justin because, Fiedler. you know, it is also extremely late when we try well, to watch exactly. here. Well, exactly, when we try yeah. to watch that, that's for sure. So, fun stuff, no doubt about it. Central Pennsylvania got two races in. Port Royal Speedway, Danny Dietrich picked up the win, came from 11th spot. That restart at the end. Holy cow, we're yeah, going to talk to Danny. Neat. And, uh, man, what a move. We're going to talk to Danny as well. Danny will join us up first here. Uh, his second win of the season, Danny Dietrich, Devin Borden, Jeff Halligan. Down at Lincoln Speedway, Chase Dietz picked up his 10th career win, first one of this season over Matt Campbell and Danny Dietrich. Uh, Aaron, the Power Eye uh, Elite Outlaw Series were at the dirt track at Texas. Yeah, and Brent Marks went down there, I'm guessing, to get a little tune-up before the high limit racing heads there. The second win of 2024, and both of his wins were in Texas. Yep, absolutely. It was Marks over Blake Hahn and Noah Gass. Other winners, Scotty Milan picked up the win at Farmington Empire. Um, Justin Sanders won the Sprint Car Challenge Tour. Want to shout out to a couple of our locals here. Uh, the USCS was at Carolina and Cherokee. Eric Riggins picked mm-hmm. up the win. Uh, the Carolina kid picked up the win, and, and actually both nights of better uh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Yeah. So picked up the win on Friday night at uh, Carolina Speedway. And the win on Saturday night at the place your mama warned you about, <laughs> Cherokee Speedway. Really, really good to see Eric Riggins. One of the really good guys. I remember when we first, years and years and years ago, we were doing our party over at um, Tony Stewart's of the place. Brickhouse. Brick, Brickhouse, yeah. We were doing our party there before the World Finals, and it's like, well, can we get a car there and anything like that? And Beersy calls up Riggins. And, we'll bring the car. We'll bring the mule. We'll bring the hauler. We'll bring this. We'll bring that. We'll bring that. And I was like... Okay, we only have so much space. Yeah, uh, they were such big parts of that, and you know, Eric has moved on and now has settled into this 360 life with family and everything yep. here in the Carolinas. But it's good to see him have success. And, and I want to give a shout out Ben McCall. Uh, if you've seen this, and he actually took a trip a couple years ago to Pennsylvania. So those of you up there in Pennsylvania might recall the autism car, the car yeah. that has all of the puzzle pieces on it. The autism card, that's Ben McCall, his dad, Jody. It's a father-son racing team. They run 305 Sprints, Carolina Sprint Tour. Picked up Ben's first career win at Livonia, Georgia. Cool. Uh, and they're just, you know me, I love my Carolina Sprint Tour guys and gals. And uh, it was really cool to see Ben and Jody and all of them celebrating. So kudos to all of our friends here in the Carolinas running sprint cars. What we're going to do, Sheldon Hartenshield's going to join us later on in the program. When we come back, 
Danny Dietrich. He joins us on the Sage Fruit Hotline. Tony, do you even remember how to drive one of these? It's not something you forget. You should know that. The drive to succeed, the need to win, the desire to be a champion. And we surround ourselves with partners that believe the same. Like Tony Stewart Racing, Sage Fruit strives to be the best in all they do. They work hard on the farm, in the packing facilities, and with their retail partners to provide high quality apples and pears all year long. You can compare apples to apples, but nothing compares to a Sage Fruit apple. Winning quality in every bite. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation here, presented by Sage Fruit. Let's go to the Sage Fruit Hotline. Joining us fresh off from a trip at the Speed Palace to Victory Lane this past weekend, Saturday afternoon racing up there. Danny Dietrich joins us. Hello, Danny. How are you? Hey, how are you guys doing? I'm doing good. We are doing well, that's for sure. Danny, um, has to feel really good to come from 11th to win one, uh, your first outing up at Port Royal to to, to get your first one in the books up there and, and go right to victory lane. That has to feel really good for you. It, it does. It was uh, definitely a lot of fun to, to kind of overcome adversity there with having to draw a bad pill and, and start in the back of the heat and get our way forward and then in the, in the feature start in 11th and um, really just had a couple of really, really good laps that, that paid off at the end. Yeah, Danny, talk about the, the last restart at the end when you were able to get by Devin Boredom on the bottom. I, I listened to your interview, I think, with Jeremy Ellum, Elliott after the race, and you talked about setting that up and how you kind of pushed him through the cone. Just walk us through that and how it all worked out and timed so perfectly. Uh, you just just watching him race, you know, the laps prior to that, I had a lot of laps behind him. Um, you know, just seeing how his car was reacting, how he was driving it, and uh, I knew I had one shot that was probably going to be the shot. Either either I had to be on him at the cone, basically pushing him through it and kind of see which direction he decided to, to take his car after the cone. Um, you know, I didn't I didn't didn't know what he was going to do, but but I knew there was there were two options. If he's going to turn left to go to the bottom and protect, I was going to try and drive around him. If he if he stayed out past the cone, I was going to try and just dart underneath him and beat him to the bottom, but. Um, I watched a lot of a lot of video and and uh, I've raced with Lance and and Fred a lot and over the years you you learn to be seasoned when it comes to situations like that and they're still hard to they're still hard to to do and and execute but uh, was luckily able to do it on Saturday for for a pretty good payday. Yeah, you know, and Danny, that's I think that's the thing. Is there a point down that front straightaway where you know you've kind of nailed the timing on this thing? Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of knew coming off turn four that I had nailed it. Um, oh. He, he, he kind of started in pretty much, I would call it the standard area, but I was able to just kind of, my motor fires off so well, and, and then just kind of rolled around there in the clean air off his right rear off the exit to get on the straightaway to make sure that, that I could stay locked in the racetrack uh, until we got up on the clean spot. And just, you know, keeping the tires under it with it being so slick was so big and, and so huge in that decision making there at the cone and it's not very easy you know you you got bad air you're you're in his dirty air essentially you're, you're lacking down force and um you know you're in the slick so it's you're trying to keep all the mile per, mile per hour you can but it's really tough you know when you, you have all the elements against you in a sense there when you get closer to the cone Danny the other thing I noticed about that okay you make the bold move down to the inside of the turn my thought is, okay, he's going to wash up the racetrack. How key was it that your car hung right to the bottom there and you were able to race off from turn two and gap him? It, it's really, really huge. Um, and I got to give a lot of credit um, to to Dave from Willwood Brakes. We work really hard together on packages. We, we don't spend a lot of time. Um, I shouldn't say we spend a lot of time. We don't spend a lot of time working on things because we, our, our package is so good right now. Um, but being able to get in there and get slowed down yeah. is key, you know, and, and I feel like I probably have the best brakes in the pit area. Uh, I've always thought that. Uh, I know there's other stuff out there that guys run, but really feel like we've, we've nailed down what I feel like is the best stopping power that's balanced uh, for, for me anyway. And, and getting underneath of them and just being able to, to kind of lean on the brakes to keep the car loaded without skating out is is. Key and, and I gotta I, I gotta thank him a lot for working with me over the last couple of years. 
Danny, you talked a lot after the race as well about trying some different things this weekend. And obviously, without going into detail uh, about what those things are, what what is it that makes you kind of play with some different stuff? You guys have been fast all year. I think you have 10 top fives and a lot of podiums, a few wins. But what is like how important is it to continue to try different things like you did? It's very important. You know, we go up there and, you know, that Port Royal is one of them places where I feel like people are so – um, dependent on that two-inch wicker bill that we've been allowed to run over the years. And, you know, taking that, you know, whether people want to realize or not, when you're sitting in a car and you put a two-inch wicker bill on over a one, it makes a huge difference for a race car driver and a race car feel. And we knew we weren't going to be able to go up there and run the same package we had before and have the same, I would call it, success. Um, but we didn't want to change too much of it because we feel like we've been pretty fast up there. Um, so we kind of kind of have the same mentality was set up, but just trying to uh, make sure we, we can keep our car in the racetrack while other guys might be skating around before the rubber comes in. And we were, we were really good uh, all day. And um, we tested some stuff and warm ups and come back in and, you know, Gary's standing there and we changed the car completely. And you can just tell we just were the fastest car in the last group of warm ups And we're, we're changing about every corner of the car or something. And, and, um, you know, he's, he's skeptical, but we go out and, and went seventh to third in the heat, and he comes back and realizes that, that <laughs> maybe we got something something brewing, you know. And uh, it just worked out, you know. It, 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 the, the track, everybody, we, we had a caution there, and everybody um, kind of when we went into one on the next next restart went to the bottom, and we just sailed the top and was almost able to go from eighth to the lead on the first first lap of the feature there. Yeah, 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 you rolled you you rolled around the outside there. It was spectacular. It really, truly was. Danny, moving back or bigger picture a little bit. Nine starts up in Central Pennsylvania. Eight podium finishes. Two wins. I, I would dare say you've got to feel pretty good about your speed overall. And we're talking Babs. We're talking w- Williams Grove. We're talking Lincoln, and now we're talking Port Royal. Yeah, you know, and it, it, it's exciting when you can be fast like that you know it, i've i've uh been very confident in my car you know we're going to get to the nighttime racing here a little bit more where it's going to be wet and heavy and i'm actually kind of looking forward to that we're, we've got our, our slick track uh slick track package pretty well and pretty good and especially around here we just need to get i would say probably going to need to get a little bit better here in the on the wet and, and uh tackier surface so you know we'll get that opportunity this weekend i don't think anybody's going to be moving start times around to, you know, race more during the day. So as long as we can work on getting that right and more balanced, then then I think we're in for a great season. For sure. Well, enough about your success. I want to hear about your son Emmett's big win in the big wheel race at Lincoln. What was it like for dad to watch that? Uh, it was pretty cool. You know, it's like it, they're having more fun with it than I am. I'm sitting there, you know, rooting him on, but I'm like, man, kid, you got to win. You know, you got expectations <laughs> to withhold here. So um, <laughs> um, he just got a big wheel the day before, never had ridden a big wheel before. And, and But he's a, he's a go-getter. He's a, he loves being outside and riding his bike and stuff like that. So him adapting to a big wheel was, was really quick. And uh, Rachel did a good job with getting him, situated on that and while we were out racing on on saturday at port royal so uh props to her and it was just a lot of a lot of fun to watch that and then you know it's back to business you know cut out of there pretty quick but proud of him for for doing that he's he's definitely uh got to drive him i guess to go win something i love it i absolutely love it danny you 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 referenced it in your last answer we were talking about racing um the the way things have been in central Pennsylvania, I don't know that there's been a weekend where everything's gone off as scheduled, yet you guys have got a fair number of races in. You haven't got all of them in. From a from a guy doing this full time, I mean, and I understand you have the warehouse that you, you, you work at as well. Your your level of appreciation for all of these tracks trying to get you guys as much racing as possible. What does that mean to you as a as a driver and as someone who's 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 doing this for a living? It's phenomenal. You know, they're taking on a big risk and I if I had to go and say I'd say this weekend was probably the least successful um you know that we've had when they've done this, you know, this year. But the tracks have really tried to get these races in for us, uh, the fans, the drivers, you know, the owners, you know, we we got a lot invested in in our racing equipment to 
we don't really want to have it sit and we don't anyway. You know, um, you know, we like to see it on the track. Our sponsors love it. And I mean, they take on a massive risk, you know, moving these start times around and, and maybe switching days. And, and they've worked, it seems like the tracks have worked pretty well together this year. And uh, that's good to see. And hopefully they can keep doing that. You know, we're, we're um, trying to work with the tracks as well, our team and myself, just to try and make it better for everybody in racing, you know, the fans and, and drivers included. And, and we don't want to see the tracks lose money either. So it's, um, I feel like it's been a pretty successful year, that's for sure. Yeah, I, I salute you. Your 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 mantra this year has been get out to the racetracks, and I somehow mm -hmm. during the spring thought we need to encourage people to get to the racetracks, and I really do enjoy all of your uh, all of your comments when you're at the racetrack and your social media posts. I, I do lead me to social media posts. Uh, last week after your one rough outing at Williams Grove, you shared uh, some of the technical details, the torque tube, the seat, and everything else. When you when you share something like that, uh, and then and we started last week's program, the 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 dialogue was phenomenal. Now dialogue is one thing, fixing it is a big challenge. We understand that. What's your objective in that? Is it to get that dialogue started? Is it just to shed some light on some of the realities of sprint car racing? Oh, absolutely. You know, I kind of, <clears throat> I kind of made that post last week just to kind of draw some attention to some people. You know, there's, there's guys out there that have way, way, way more clearance. Um, or I'm just going to say they have, yeah, they have way more clearance. I would say from the rear to their what we call the butt bar there, and um, you know, I, I think that it's key to realize that we do have a bent down butt bar there and dan Russellman and i worked on that years and years and years ago to get that thing low as possible as possible at the time and uh, talking to him i'm not really sure what changed i mean i know i changed seats uh from a Kirky to an ultra shield but uh for some reason i'm it, it, there's more clearance there than i had before uh from the the frame butt bar that protects the seat and the rear um, but i spent you know probably a good 45 minutes to an hour last Tuesday in my shop, jacking the car up with no stops on it and the shocks unhooked and all that kind of stuff to, to work on getting that, that clearance, uh, closed up, you know, that gap closed up. And, and we did, you know, Dan sent me some bars here. We're, we're bolting in. We didn't have them for this past weekend, but we will have them going forward. Um, and, and, and he's great to work with. I just, um, kind of bring it to everybody's attention because it, if you don't take your stops off and your shocks off and, and jack up your rear and, and kind of see where you're at, you know, uh, you could really end up in a lot worse shape, um, you know, than, than I was. I mean, I, I spent a couple of days at the chiropractor, but all in all, we were, I'm good to go um, and got very lucky. But that's part of racing. When we climb in these things, we're, we're all, you know, in the danger of the sport, you know, and uh, we, un I understand it, you know, perfectly, but it doesn't mean you want to, you want to take the hit any harder than you have to. Yeah, I mean, Danny, you obviously are, are pretty dialed in on, on social media and the pros and cons of it, but we, I think we all appreciate it when people like yourself bring attention to safety and, and hopefully open the dialogue about, about you know, maybe making improvements or people looking at what your car looked like and went to their shop and, and took a look. Um, you know, how, how important is it for you for the overall picture uh, for our sport? I know you mentioned it before, the tracks working together, the teams working together, um, you know, for the overall overall growth of the sport i mean i feel like central pennsylvania has always been a, a strong spot in the country but it's neat to see your your part in it that the role you play in, in in helping our sport yeah i mean we don't want to see anybody get hurt um you know kevin swindell i'd say is, is obviously the the person i look at the most there's uh the most social media active that has taken the biggest hit from an accident you know where he's mm -hmm. he's um you know, a big advocate as far as talking about this and getting on Twitter. And, um, you know, I, I kind of made my post, I brought it to people's attention once I made, a, I made, I replied to a few things, but, um, you know, those guys like Kevin and Terry McCarl and uh, Parker Price, they kind of got on there and they, they kind of took off with it. Um, so I kind of made the post and, uh, then I kind of just got off Twitter for a few days, to be honest with you. Just, uh, they, they were, they were taking care of it in a sense where I I didn't really want to get invested in it and um, have questions left and right, 100 questions. So um, I just think that, that there's a lot of room for improvement for most drivers. There's drivers like myself who, uh, being 6'2", and, and I sit in a car, I'm very, I'm very torso long. I'm long in the torso, so I'm tall in the upper body. and There's not a lot of room for me. I can't go and put um, sharp advantage 
inserts in my seats or stuff like that without being what I would consider too high or or you know just competitively too high where the roll center is so high that that I'm in trouble there and, and the car can't react the way it should. So it's a it's a big happy medium and you want to take a risk but you you don't but you want to be fast. Um, you know you gotta you gotta judge out your know, weigh out your options. Uh, yeah. I just I thought the conversation. The car, I know nothing about this thing. I'm I'm like technologically the challenged. dumb radio guy. I'm a I'm a dumb radio guy. <laughs> but when people are starting to offer this and that, I'm like, man, this is complicated. And I think that's what I came away from. You know, it's not just a matter of hey, throw some more inserts in there. There's a lot of moving parts yeah. and pieces. Yeah, month um, years ago, I sat right on the the you know right on the butt bar or right down lower, and uh, now I don't. So it's mm-hmm. it's uh, I'm up about a half inch higher than I used to be. Yeah, yeah, oh, fascinating stuff. All right, so not that you don't have anything else going. What's that? You give yourself a little more padding in that thing, so yeah. that way when you're sitting right on that aluminum, it's not so bad. <laughs> yeah, a, well, there's that, yeah. <laughs> and, Danny, not that you didn't have enough going on. Uh, I saw a copy of a story in Area Auto Racing News where you have teamed up with Doug Rose, and you're going to co-promote a race in November at Bridgeport. How in the wide world of sports did this come about? I didn't want to see them lose that date. You know, they've done years ago. Bridgeport, when they changed the racetrack, I was not a fan of the new surface and how it raced. I thought it was uh, very top dominant. I thought that it was kind of dangerous because the only way you could pass cars was to just short slot and basically make the other guy lift, which isn't. I mean, that's not very great racing. But they, Doug has done a great job adjusting the racetrack to get it where it races really well over there, top to bottom. And, uh, you know, it's like he said, leap year going on and things being moved around. But, you know, things are late in the year, but then Knoxville's normal. And it just kind of screws everything up. And and he left that date open. I thought, well, I'm going to get a hold of him, you know, and, and talk to him about it and tell him he's got all my support, you know, as far as coming down there. And so, you know, eventually we talked and I said, well, if you want if you want some help with it, you know, if you want a partnership in it, I'd be interested, you know. And um, I've helped, you know, I've kind of helped. Todd a little bit with the Wiker, just, yep. you know, not very much, but just been around him and Steve and uh, looking forward to just taking the knowledge that I've learned helping the Wiker, you know, the Bob Wiker Memorial race and trying to put it toward, uh, you know, this, this Jersey finale, dirty Jersey finale at Bridgeport. It's exciting. It really is. And, and I think that when we were in the early days of Wing Nation going up there, I found it. I I I I, had, I knew you were part of it, but the hands-on, the meetings, and everything like that, and I always really enjoyed your perspective on it. So as we get closer to that, obviously we'll be talking about that as well. But Danny, we got to get out of here. But man, I'll tell you, congratulations on the great start to the season, and uh, we appreciate all the uh, the time and all the insight here today on Wing Nation. Absolutely, anytime, guys. I appreciate it as well. Thank you. There we go, Danny Dietrich joining us uh, here on Wing Nation on the Sage Fruit Hotline. We need to step away. Sheldon Hoddenshield, he's coming up next. Tony, do you even remember how to drive one of these? It's not something you forget. You should know that. The drive to succeed, the need to win, the desire to be a champion. And we surround ourselves with partners that believe the same. Like Tony Stewart Racing, Sage Fruit strives to be the best in all they do. They work hard on the farm, in the packing facilities, and with their retail partners to provide high-quality apples and pears all year long. You can compare apples to apples, but nothing compares to a Sage Fruit apple. Winning quality in every bite. Welcome back. It is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. Let's go right back to the Sage Fruit outline. The winner of the Jason Johnson Classic Saturday night at Arrowhead, Sheldon Hodenshield joins us. Hello, Sheldon. How are you? Hey, all good. Thanks for having me. Man, oh man, it's good. To, it's it's great to talk to you, but it's good to see you standing on a wing. And you've done it a couple times this year. Uh, tell us how special that was to to stand on the wing, to take the trophy from Jacks to win the Jason Johnson Classic. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, was fighting for a win on Friday, and uh, yeah, to just be able to come back uh, the next night and and get a win like that, especially Jason's race, and um, yeah, just uh, and being close before running second at Ozark to gravel in the past, and uh, yeah, just really special to be able to get a win like that. Uh, you know, one one that you like to check off and put in the books. 
Sheldon, you talked about Jason a little bit after the race. You know, you obviously had the chance to race with him for a few years. You knew Jax when he was a little, little kid. I mean, he's still a little kid, but he's growing up real fast. Uh, On the emotional side of that, what was it? What is it like to win such a special race? Yeah, for sure. Uh, Especially, you know, for my car owner, uh, Richard Marshall, they have uh, obviously a, a great relationship with the Johnson family and, um, yeah, I've got to do a little bit. We got to go skiing with, uh, you know, Philip and, and Jason back in the day when, when just Richard, uh, you know, my first year in the 17 car and, uh, getting to go skiing with them in Tahoe and, uh, yeah, just super special, uh, you know, for all of us, uh, you know, something, something that, you know, you, you just hope that you can accomplish one day and, and cool to be able to do. Well, I'll tell you what, that track locked down there a little bit, and uh, you had uh, you had that number two car all over you at the end. Do you sit, do you, I mean, do you hear him? Do you sense him? Do you feel him? Do you see him? What was the, what was the last lap or so like there? Um, yeah, I never actually really saw the two. I just figured uh, somebody was close and uh, trying to get by lappers late uh, in the rubber is always uh, tricky to maneuver, and uh, yeah, I think with two to go, I... I kind of missed the rubber the one lap trying to get by the seven and uh you know you just do everything you can to to kind of get back down and and protect a little bit and uh just not miss it sheldon when you're leading a race when the track takes rubber how how difficult it is is it to know how hard to push the car i mean obviously there's a point where you're spinning the tires too much and people start popping tires but you also know there's spots on the track that have some traction left like how difficult especially leading is it to manage that yeah, really difficult. And I'd say, uh, you know, early when when Gia was leading, uh, you know, it's hard hard to decide where to go and, and when you should move. And, uh, you know, you can kind of see uh, when Gia was up there pounding the top and when the lappers are just rolling the bottom and keeping up with them. And, you know, I'm able to see that and, and know that, you know, we can go uh, way slower down here and keep up. And, um, yeah, you got to conserve your tires and, and running second like that. It's also tough because, you know, you want to run it pretty hard and, and try and get by them and then be able to slow it down. So, um, yeah, I think we did it perfect on Saturday of, uh, being able to run the car hard and then, you know, kind of chilling out a little bit and, and save our car and, uh, you know, have a little bit of tire left there at the end. Find that balance, that's for sure. This race was the first race at a at a brand new facility. I, it opened last year, but it was a brand new facility. Sheldon, we're in an exciting time of sprint car racing. There's a lot of newness. What's it like to go to a new place like that? I mean, I understand you don't know the racetrack or anything, but do you feel the vibe? Do you feel the energy? I mean, the place looked like it was just rocking on Saturday night. Yeah, what a beautiful facility. Uh, you know, that's what we love to see, and and you know. Uh, becoming a little less, uh, you know, we don't quite see that as much now. Obviously, it's hard for these racetracks to make money and and be able to update facilities like they have been. So, uh, yeah, I love going to new places and and being fresh for everybody. And you know, I kind of look at them them tracks on our schedule and and know that it's a perfectly level playing field and and uh, you know just see who can figure it out the quickest. Sheldon, when you look at the season so far, how would you assess things? Is it your second win? Uh, you've had a handful of top fives, but how do you feel overall so far? Yeah, I feel like we have a top three car for sure. and uh, been a little bit of a struggle. I think uh, blew up three engines in eight races and, uh, you know, was in contention to, to win one of them and probably a top five for the other one. And, um, yeah, and then a couple mistakes on my part, just, uh, you know, in contention to lead races too. So, um, yeah, I feel like we're a top three guy for sure. And, and our car has just been amazing. So, uh, confidence is great and our team's really solid. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for, for the rest of the year. I feel like kind of switch back to an old package that we had in, in 22 and, uh, we got our car speed back and, and my confidence back too. That just, that boggles my mind. You talk about driver confidence, okay? And you referenced it, I think, in the first answer. Friday night at US 36, you had one get away from you there. That hangled up with a lap car. How are you 
emotionally? Are you are, are you able to put that behind you? And and to follow up on that, how important was it for you to come right back the next night and bounce back with a twenty thousand dollar win? Um, how do you how do you ride that how do you ride that roller coaster? <laughs> yeah, I think we've been riding it all year, and uh, <laughs> roller coaster is uh, the perfect word for it. But uh, yeah, just I think uh, you know Volusia obviously showed. Uh, that we're able to come back uh, after car problems and we're able to come back after drive driver issues too. So, um, you know, we've kind of had it on all aspects this summer already. And um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, your whole career prepares you for situations like this. So, uh, you know, we've had much harder, harder issues to, to overcome in the past. So, uh, you know, I kind of look at it as not really too big of a deal and just keep rolling. Yeah, that definitely comes with experience. Sheldon, you mentioned that you went back to a package you ran in 22. Uh, just quickly in reference to that, is that something that you thought about during the off season? Is it something that you maybe thought about during the season last year, but it's hard to implement mid-season? What were some of the decisions to, to maybe go back to that package from two years ago? Yeah, I think uh, so. Obviously, in 21, we had a, uh, a well, let's see here. Obviously, 22, we had a good year, and then, uh, you know, you kind of always think you can be better, and uh, we wanted to try some stuff in 23, and, um, you know, for me as a driver, it's, uh, I'd rather try some stuff and and see if we're better or not than never try it and not know. So, uh, you know, hats off to my team for, for letting me and Ripper try things that we thought would work and, you know, and discover they wouldn't, so... Uh, but for me as a driver, I'd rather know that they didn't work and, and be able to kind of go back to our 22 package of something that we know works. And, um, yeah, just confidence wise for me knowing that and, and then letting us try it. Um, yeah, that's, that's huge. So, uh, yeah, at the end of last year, we kind of, you know, knew what direction we wanted to go for this year. And, um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, we already feel it paying off. I looked at your Instagram page, Sheldon. There's a whole lot of dirt bike accidents. Are these present? You 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 joked around and said me falling off a bike or me hitting the ground again or something like that. Are you are are there some old videos or are you you still riding around on that dirt bike some? <laughs> nah, I don't ride that dirt bike anymore, and I think you can see why. Uh, <laughs> nah, I just I don't think uh, you know. I think people know my background a little bit, but um, you know maybe not all the way, and I you know, sit around, kind of get bored, and I start looking at old videos, and I'm like, man, I hit the ground a lot in my life here, and, uh, you know, turning 30, I kind of realize why my body hurts as much as it does, but, um, yeah, just for fun, and, uh, you know, let people kind of see, uh, you know, what I used to do, not that I used to crash all the time, but it just seems that I have all those videos, and, um, yeah, just a, a little different side of things, and having a little fun. I was hoping that wasn't the case. I was like, man, I, I hurt watching them, that's for sure. <laughs> it seems like you and Zan are doing a little bit more social media. I noticed you've got um, some videos up. I, one maybe you posted yesterday, today, of a recap of Florida. Um, what was the what is it, What has that been like? To I know it's an important part of your brand uh, to have some social media, some behind the scenes. But what is that like for you guys to share? Yeah, it's fun. And it's uh, it's a lot of work, but uh yeah it's fun for us and and the team and just kind of be able to show people a little bit of behind the scenes and a little bit um you know when I did it I I wanted to do it a little different way and I feel like you know our docuseries is kind of like uh, an actual documentary instead of just you know your weekend vlogs of kind of how everybody else does it so um it's a little harder to produce and, and costs a little bit more money and uh you know uh, we don't really get anything out of it. We kind of just hope that the fans enjoy it. And, um, yeah, and I've been starting uh, to do a little bit of a, a different, like, lifestyle type of merchandise and uh, to go along with some of the documentary stuff. And, um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun, a lot of work, and, and Van does a great job of it. Well, Zan does a great job of it, but Pella does too. I see she was helping you with sit-ups the last time I saw that. Um, looks like looks like Pella gets involved also. 
Oh yeah, Pella. She holds her weight and, and sells her merch, and uh, yeah, keeps <laughs> us all having a good time. He's and kind of the star. She really, is kind of the yeah. star. Yeah, she is kind of the star. And I saw you had Pella yesterday making sure that she didn't hurt her eyes looking at the eclipse. So we had Pella safe as far as the eyes go yesterday, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, Pella's gosh. seen two eclipses now, so yeah, she's uh, looking through her welding goggles. There you go. Awesome. It is awesome, awesome stuff. Well, Sheldon, like I said, I just love uh, I love that you're you got a couple wins this season. And I really love hearing about your your enthusiasm about the performance of the car. I had I look at results and then I was like, yeah, you're right. They had an engine problem here. They had this yeah. year. Uh, sounds like you got that thing rolling well. And uh, we wish you well as you go forward. And uh, appreciate the time joining us here on Wing Nation. Yep, thank you guys. Have a good one. There we go. That is Sheldon Hottenshield joining us here on the program. And oh, by the way, World of Outlaws are going to Peevely. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, I didn't. We should, we should yeah. have asked. We should have asked, asked him about that. But uh, man, oh man, that Sheldon he gets could, around Peevely. He gets around Peevely really, really yeah, good. We need to step away. More Wing Nation in just a moment. Tony, do you even remember how to drive one of these? It's not something you forget. You should know that. The drive to succeed the need to win, the desire to be a champion. And we surround ourselves with partners that believe the same. Like Tony Stewart Racing, Sage Stewart strives to be the best in all they do. They work hard on the farm, in the packing facilities, and with their retail partners to provide high quality apples and pears all year long. You can compare apples to apples, but nothing compares to a Sage Fruit apple. Winning quality in every bite. It is Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit. Love it. Absolutely love it. Uh, National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum birthdays, Tom Marchese, uh, Emmett Malloy, Newton, Buzz Rose, all those birthdays coming up. And today would have been the 102nd birthday of Johnny Thompson, a 1996 inductee into the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame. Born in 1922, 1938, he started racing against his family wishes. World War II came along. He served on a B-25 bomber, was wow. decorated with five battle, star, uh, battle stars, and a distinguished Air Force Medal for bravery. Oof. Yeah, how about that? Came back, right back into the racing, had success in the midgets, was the 1951 Triple A Eastern Midget Champion, moved to bigger cars, 1954 Eastern Division Big Car Champion, Competed in eight Indy 500s, three of those with top five finishes. But as was always the case, not always the case, but as was often the case, 1960, the Allentown Fairgrounds, the great Allentown Fair race, a crash took the life of Johnny Thompson, but he is forever enshrined at the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum, one sprint car place. Aaron, I, I think this is... Yeah, yeah, we had that fascinating visit with Danny Dietrich. Yeah. And we hear about these things. And yes, and Danny said, we as drivers understand this. When we go back and we think about the great, and you walk through the Hall of Fame, you see it, man, there is a there is a lot of drivers who perished in these cars back in the there early sure days. There sure were. And, and thankfully, it's fewer and fewer. But you're right. You always risk that. But when you do go through the museum and, like, you read that, that man was 38 years old when he passed away in a race car. So... Continue to work on those safety improvements like Danny is. Yep, absolutely. National Sprint Car Hall of Fame and Museum is one sprint car place. You can uh, join. Hey, be a member. Sprint Car HOF. Just be a member and you get discounts on on all the merchandise. You can be part of the deal there. And then, of course, they have the uh, the raffles for the, uh, the uh, Triple X chassis, the Corvette raffles, all the stuff. Uh, it's just such a great, great organization, mm -hmm. and and I, you know, maybe you, you know, maybe you, you just just become a member. That's all you need yeah. to do. Just become a member. All right, sprint cars, and uh, I may get to see some of this. Oh, where I'm are we going? About this. Well, uh, World of Outlaw Noss Energy Drink. We just talked about that. They're at Peevely Friday and Saturday. Old I, Schrader's track. Old Schrader's track. Exactly. <laughs> I'm still. Um, I'm. I'm watching the weather. I think we're in good shape. I'm about ready to pull the trigger on the whole thing. Um, Kubota High Limit Racing returns. It was supposed to run tonight at Riverside, got rained out mm -hmm. uh, at the ditch. Friday night, Texarkana 67 Raceway. Saturday, the dirt track at Texas. Sunday, RPM Speedway. My game plan right now is to fly down Friday morning because I want to go see Tim Crawley. Uh, Tim runs uh, Texarkana 67 yeah. Speedway. I don't need to be doing karaoke with Tim Crawley. No, you should. 
And now I'm friends with Laura on, on oh, she's Facebook. Phenomenal. Yeah, Isn't man, she, their posts, they're, she, they're, they're right they're, on they're, it. They are wonderful people. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's its funny because they're wonderful people, and then yet they're, they're mom and dad to, to Landon yeah. as well. And the, the one yesterday, I think it was yesterday, we think about Landon. He's out there whirling this wheel of all yeah. car. He hasn't driven alone in a streetcar yet. Yeah, and she posted a picture of who was it with Jason Johnson, and there, he, there's Landon in the background, little tiny little, kid tiny Landon. Kid. Yeah, um, they're wonderful people, and so my game plan is I can only I, 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 I would love to go for the whole weekend. The original thought was good on Thursday, do little Texas, uh, the Keith Coons micro race, oh. stay the whole weekend, come back Monday. Just the way things are at home and and everything. I need to get to a sprint car race. And so I'm looking at two. I would My plan now is Friday morning and then back Sunday. So do Texarkana and the dirt track at Texas. They're getting a lot of rain, and Texarkana is one of those tracks that may or may not mm-hmm. be able to do it. So I may end up doing Saturday, Sunday, but I'm going down for two days of high-limit racing. So I'm excited about that. I really am. Uh, King of the West Series, it is the Pita Murphy Classic. Pita Murphy. Pita Murphy, $11,000 to win. You bet. Attica Raceway Park, Friday and Saturday, Spring Nationals, 6000 to win each night. Nice stuff. For, uh, other racing, Friday Williams Grove, Saturday Fast at Wayne County, Lincoln, Port Royal, and Sunday Baps. And I did like that Danny Dietrich said, may, hopefully this week, Danny's, of course, yeah. looked at the weather. We may not have to be juggling dates up there. Yeah, the daytime shows are difficult. It's great that they're racing, but yeah, they're difficult. It really, truly is. So great, great stuff. Folks, get out to a race. Go to a race. Go to a sprint car race. But if you don't have sprint cars in your area, go to a racetrack. We got to, you know, this is part of one of the things that Danny's been so adamant about is we got to, I mean, I, we're so spoiled rotten with pay-per-view coverage. And it's great. What Dirt Vision and Flow are doing is great. You know what's better? Going to a track, watching the race live, hanging out with real people grabbing a hot dog, grabbing a beer, grabbing a popcorn, and go. So go to a racetrack this weekend. Go to two, why not, while you're at it. <laughs> uh, seriously, just get out and support these racers. Really fun. Fun show. Man, Danny and Sheldon are just so great, aren't they? They are. Yep, really, a lot really of good candid stuff. info. Yes, a lot of candid info. Really, truly is. So fun stuff. So we do, we're on social media. Yeah, we're on X, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook. <laughs> We're on Instagram. You can find all of our stuff on our YouTube channel. Uh, And subscribe to that and like and share and tell everybody you love what we're doing here. Do all of that. We appreciate Danny Dietrich and Sheldon Hottenshield joining us. But more important than all of that, thank you for joining us this time on Wing Nation presented by Sage Fruit.